So what would bring an 82-year-old former American president to the wilds of Ethiopia? How about the chance to eradicate a painful disease, river blindness? Um, this is the enemy. These little black flies live by the river and then they bite people and uh, cause terrible itching that is painful, leaves people unable to work or go to school, and ultimately leaves people with deteriorated vision and in some cases completely blind. President Carter explained why this bucolic setting isn't what it appears to be. This is the only kind of stream that uh, breeds the uh, rubber blindness flies. If, if it's a flat stream, uh, like the East River New York, or uh, Hudson River, that kind of stream, uh, there's no river blindness. And it takes a high oxygen content for river blindness uh, flies to, to generate. Right behind Jimmy Carter, uh, washing her clothes in a creek, there was this young woman who I talked to for a little bit, and uh, she didn't know who Jimmy Carter is, but two of her four children had caught river blindness just in the last couple of months. And she told how at first she had brought one of them to a witch doctor, but that hadn't helped. And so then she took that child to the clinic that is getting support from Carter. And the child was cured. And now whenever her children suffer, she is taking them to the clinic. And so just watching her there, I realized that what an incredible change in the quality of life the people here are enjoying for a very modest investment. Um, this old man, McKinnon, really moved me. He's suffering from itching caused by river blindness, and the disease has progressed to the point where he couldn't tell how many fingers I was holding up. If McKinnon was seven instead of 78, there's a chance that his life wouldn't have been so hard, hard because of Carter's I, efforts. I Jimmy Carter questioned McKinnon and his fellow victims. McKinnon couldn't see Carter, and he hadn't even heard of him, but he understood that he was a great elder. One of the lessons of Carter's post-presidency is simply that foreign aid can be enormously effective especially when it's targeted toward improving health. After leaving the White House, President Carter ended up adopting horrific diseases like guinea worm, river blindness, elephantiasis, trachoma, and schistosomiasis. Now I'll bet you haven't heard of them, or if you have, I bet you can't spell them, because those are ailments that rarely get much attention or funding here, but they cause excruciating damage in the developing world. The victims of these diseases are among the world's poorest and most voiceless people. And so, how does one address the question is why should we care? Why should your average American care about river blindness or about guinea worm or any of these other things? One of the sobering facts is that most of these diseases that we're treating in Africa existed when I was a child in Georgia. Trachoma, malaria, and so forth. And the fact that we've totally eliminated them in the rich world shows that they are preventable and they are totally unnecessary. And it's almost impossible to imagine the suffering caused by people with, uh, say, rubber blindness. Not only are more than 1% of the total population of Ethiopia completely blind, but little tiny children all the way up through the age groups that have uh, rubber blindness have itching that's almost unbearable. The people get tired of scratching themselves with their fingers, so they get stones and, and pieces of wood to scratch themselves, and they scratch all the skin off. And the, uh, and the skin turns looks like a leopard spot. And then after a while, the, the microfilaria go through the body and attack the eyes and cause complete blindness. Well. You know, it's, it's uh, heartbreaking to see this happening unnecessarily. And, and with uh, one treatment of a year of uh, medicines that are given to us free of charge by Merkin Company, we can make sure that nobody in this village will ever go blind. So, you know, the, the combination of diseases that afflict a, a beautiful village like this uh, and the intense suffering that people have that can be prevented uh, obviously make it well worthwhile. And the, and the cost 
per person is almost minuscule. And it strikes me that one of the things you did as president was to put human rights issues on the international agenda, and that since then, one of the things you've been trying to do has been put public health issues more kind of squarely on the agenda so that we face conditions that, frankly, we'd rather not. Is that, is that an apt comparison? Well, well, that's true, but I think the difference is the definition of human rights. In, in America, if you ask somebody on the street, what do you mean by human rights, they'll say uh, freedom of speech, freedom of assembly, freedom of worship, trial by jury, uh, you know, a democratic government. But those are not the human rights that afflict people in this village. Well, they have some of those things, but, but I think there's a, there's a human right to live a decent life, to have a home in which to sleep at night, uh, to be free of preventable diseases, to have a modicum of uh, education, uh, to have some uh, human self-respect, some hope that the future will be better than the past has been. You know, those are also human rights. One of the things that's so important to realize is that these people are just as intelligent and just as ambitious uh, and just as hardworking, and their family values are just as good as mine. And they are stricken with disease and poverty, not because of any inadequacy on their own part. They've just had not have a chance, and have, have a, they just haven't had a chance in life to take advantage of their own talent that God gave them. Is this one of each family? Yes. Look, Jimmy Carter has demonstrated that it is possible to mount a private war on disease. Now it's time for governments to join that battle. America's image and influence have been on the decline, so if we were to join in on an assault on malaria and elephantiasis, we could save millions of lives and bolster our own reputations. So let's go to war, not on Iran, but on third world disease. In Ethiopia, for the New York Times, I'm Nicholas Kristof.